swept away, swept away. Ah, I'm cornered in the cold where you left me. Left again, left again. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the test studio. Paul, it, it's not Tuesday. It, it's Wacky Wednesday. It's just Wednesday. <laughs> Wacky Wednesday. You're throwing me for a loop because I, I'm like slightly punch drunk, a little delusional. It's like weirdly bleary and ugh here in Massachusetts. So we're, I don't know, Jill, are you feeling, I'm feeling like, mm, it's, mm. I'm feeling hump day. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it hard. It's a good day for, pl- a- for planning, right? It's a planning day. We're going to, we're going to plan. We're going to plan. I, yes. I was saying to, to Jill before while we were while we were dancing that uh, mm. and Kali's here, so I can tell I can tell her I've been doing yoga every single day. This lady's yoga and my with and the other day I did um, I did one of the half an hour videos. And I was super proud of myself and my seven year old mm. was doing it with me. And at the beginning of the video, she was like. Yoga is really easy, mom. Like, I, this is not even going to help us make stretch our muscles at all. And then 10 minutes in, she was like, my muscles hurt. I can't, I can't do this anymore. So, um, so we've, yeah, we're, we're building, we're building up our resiliency for, for yoga, but it was definitely super, super fun. I got to jump on that. I you used do. to, way back in the day, I really loved Pilates and that's one of those things too that you could watch Pilates and be like that's just stretching or they'll do the thing where you're where you're like this and I'm like I'm dying I'm actually dying (laughs) I'm dying I'm dead Exactly. And it's so funny. I thought yeah. that like doing it at home would make me, cause I, I used to do obviously in, in a class, actually in the class that was in this test studio space, it kind of breaks <laughs> my heart. It used to be a yoga studio that I attended and went to. I'm like, I'm sad. Um, but <laughs> I, I am still like as driven by peer pressure when I'm alone doing yoga. Like I, I'm like holding on to it, like uh, next to weeping. And I'm like, I could just set my knee down. No one would know, but I feel I feel like Holly, I feel like you would know. So I've been holding she out. For, she would know. Yeah. So I've been, I've been holding Her out. Her live streams are actually, <laughs> um, they're kind of like postmodern. So what's happening is like the Peloton, um, she can see you. She can see me. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, for so. sure. It's like right now she's just like screaming at the screen being like, I can see you. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, Aubrey in the house and Richard hey. and Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Everyone is hanging out. We have Luis and Gretchen. I'm going way too fast to be able to. It's Wacky Wednesday. Say what, Yogi Katie? Yeah, I used to be um, decent at yoga. I'm never going to say I was great, but now I'm definitely like, I'm, I'm living in the beginner zone again mm. where, where I'm like, oh, downward dog. Oh, this hurts. <laughs> new, we're rediscovering new muscles. We're at that age, <laughs> we're at that age. where you get, yeah. you get an actual injury from like, when you're at a red light and you're like, oh, let me just grab that thing. And you're like, yeah, I broke all the things. I, <laughs> my neck hurts, my shoulder hurts. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't be. It just happens. Uh, yeah. We shouldn't be, but it happens. Well, it happens. we're talking about planning today. And in true planning 
world space. Uh, we, mm-hmm. I did not plan this because I want to build it from scratch right here with everyone. So, yeah. so everyone shout out questions. If you have them, mm-hmm. throw a cue in front of them so that Paul feels happy because we care about Paul's feelings. We have Todd, we have Todd in the house. Everyone is hanging out. I love it. Oh, so we're shouting out and to we Louise. Can't, we can't downplay like that we didn't plan this because we did. True. We did. We put out a, um, a poll it's, out it's there true. to see. We, we didn't, we didn't <laughs> like, plan like if you're the jumping scenes. In now. Yeah, if you're jumping in, you're like, wait a sec. I'm not taking advice from people who don't plan about planning. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I've gone to some, when I was a teacher, I'd go to these professional development <laughs> days or retreats and everything. And I've walked out of two sessions. And let me tell you how they started. Um, hi, all right. So I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to, this session is all about like Google apps for kids. And you know what, honestly, most of you here probably know more than I do. And I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, um, we go. <laughs> cause, cause I like took it because I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I love. I want to know even more. I'm already, I've already got my, my toe dipped. I really want to dive That's into true. it. And you just said, I know more than you. Peace out. This so, is true. It, I let off badly. It's very true. So what, by, <laughs> by, by not planning, I do not mean that we did not plan out this topic or take your input on what you wanted to hear more about. I more meant that. And here, I'm going to throw myself into live demo mode. To do live demo mode. I more meant that we are going to be talking about scenes over here, overlays, and yes. folders, of which I have one up here. But I did not want to build a whole bunch of stuff in advance because most of the questions around scenes and folders rely on there not to be any there. And most folks who are jumping right <laughs> in from the start are kind of like, ah, lots of windows. It can be not helpful. <laughs> yeah, it exactly. can be very intimidating to be like, wait a second, you were talking about building things up and it's already done been built. built. Yeah. Also, I see James Hicks in the building. Woo! You see me rocking your shirt. What Woo! up? Oh. Yes. What's up, James? I know, except that the microphone is like right there. So you like, this is, this is the show where, yeah, there you go. There you go. Model it, model it. <laughs> Quietly model it. I love it. Quietly model it. I'm very I subtle. love it. All right. Wait, wait. <laughs> what's what's popping? What's popping? What's popping? Where's Nikki when we're oh, what's popping? I love India. I love it. All right. Well, the, the one thing I will say that I have now started doing <laughs> based on failing a couple of times, <laughs> which we went through in our, in our failure, in, in, our, our, fail fa- episode. in our fail episode, is yeah. before, before you start any kind of plan for a new stream or a new show that you're doing, whatever you're building that's new in Ecamm, whether you're an old, an old Ecamm user or a brand new Ecamm user, and you're starting from scratch, shoot on over here to the Ecamm Live menu, scroll down here to the preferences, and just... just just, here, just review your preferences for a second, <laughs> because the, the team here are always updating these things. And also mm-hmm. what worked for one show may not be what you want to set for a future show. So I, I really would challenge you to every time that you're building something new or even just jumping into the app. <laughs> like I really just want to kind of yeah. go through here and make sure that this makes sense. So um, there's a bunch of them. I, sorry to cover our faces, but... Um, all the way through. So here, you know, all the different preferences. There's a ton of these little tabs up here across the top. So you just want to just double check that everything makes sense. Mm-hmm. And we have we have lots of videos about this. Um, Diana Gladney did a great one for our Ecamp Simplified series that actually just talks through like what you want to look through when you're doing preferences and checking preferences. And she gives you hers. Um, but yeah, you know, just uh, just double check these. Just go through and double check that everything makes sense here in these. Um, and once you've done that, then you can just X out of it and not worry about it. But that's your your step one when it comes to yeah. planning your show. <laughs> Even if you have like if if you're if you're streaming at different times of the day, or if you don't have the ability to plug in via Ethernet, or you're kind of worried about your um, your connection and everything. Yeah. I tend to, when I record in Ecamm, because I do a lot of videos that are just recording, not Mm -hmm. streaming, I set those, I mean, I set all of my preferences, my video as high as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. But if I know I'm going to stream during a shoddy time or from a shoddy place, I'll lower my, uh, my stream quality because if I'm just going to Facebook, 720 is fine. If I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, like I don't, I don't want to push things and put a a bigger strain on my network connecting. So there have been times where I've just like, I'm, I was recording in 4k and then I go to hit stream. I'm like, Oh, wait a second. 
I don't want to do that. I can lower it down. So that's one thing that almost every time I do anything in Ecamm, that's that's one of the preferences I always check because I don't want to set myself up to uh, to stream at a higher level than what my computer or my network connection can handle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I always I always have these in the wrong place. I always want to go to the output menu and that's not where like hardly anything is, but this, so this is why you're watching me doing this. But yeah, over here under, and we can't make any changes because we're actively live streaming, but, um, but here are the different, you know, options and things as it pertains to streams. Um, a lot of these are also in the preferences menu. So you will have reviewed that if you follow our step yeah. one, but yeah, so here I'm going out at 1080 P, but you can go, yeah, from 540 all the way up to 4k. There's also the stream aspect, which I, I think a lot of people forget about when they think about Ecamm. So, you know, really take a look at that and hopefully, hopefully your step before you're even jumping into Ecamm is thinking about like, what is your show or video about? <laughs> where is it going to like all of those questions you should have outlined or whiteboarded or jotted on a you know in yeah. a note or on an iPad however you want to you jot down that information but um, you do have options here you do have you know going wide extra wide classic square tall which is great if you're doing a short or a vertical video um, so there's yeah. a bunch of bunch of choices uh, that are here and James added which is a super good point and I want to cover next as we're as we jump into profiles <laughs> is that if you are using profiles, which I absolutely encourage you to do, they are awesome. The, you, there's so much that, about them that is just fantastic. The profiles hold a lot of settings. They're meant to kind of encompass an entire show or event or video that, that you're doing. So I, again, in like the fail episode, I think I mentioned this. <laughs> I when, The one example I have is that... Um, I had virtual camera and virtual microphone turned off in one of my profiles because it was just a new profile. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really started setting it up. And then I was jumping on a call with someone and I was like, I'll turn on my virtual camera. I'm going to look fancy. And I jumped on. I was like, the virtual camera isn't working. I need to email Glenn. <laughs> it's not working. It's broken. And put then in I, a help yeah, desk yeah, ticket. exactly. Put in a help desk <laughs> ticket. I was like throwing myself on my sword. I'm like, I don't, I tried everything. I don't know what's, it was just that I had not literally didn't turn it on didn't notice that it didn't have the little symbol here in the corner, just immediately panicked. <laughs> so if I can do it, I'm sure that some of you can do it. So yeah, just double check all of those preferences, um, especially if you're going to shift between profiles. But uh, profiles, yeah, Doc, close your eyes. Doc is always like, what? Uh, up here, profiles are one of the newer features to Ecamm. And, and really, so you can see, again, I can't uh, set up a new one while I'm live, but I have a whole slew of them. Um, I even have a TikTok one because I've been playing around. But, oh. <laughs> but, hey -oh. but they let you, they let you define out your different shows. So, you know, we have live from the test studio. That's a show that I do all the time. Now it's super easy. Um, you know, whether or not I'm playing around with different things or doing different things, I just jump in, open Ecamm, click down to, <laughs> to live from the test studio, make any tweaks to my existing scenes and I'm ready to go. It, um, it also lets you share these out. So if you're collaborating, if you're not the if you're not the active live streamer or producer and you want to send right. like what you're building to a team member or vice versa, you can do that. And the, again, the profile will hold everything. So it'll hold your scenes, your settings, you know, everything that you need. So you can send it over an e-camera on the other side can click it. It'll open up and it'll have everything all labeled beautifully. All overlays <laughs> and everything. Labeled beautifully. Yeah. The, and the only thing that wouldn't necessarily transfer our huge big, intro videos or b-roll like the yeah. video files mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yep. yeah any of those like um assets be, and elements be. you would still need to to send over yeah any of your like cool yeah. cool graphics and things unless you're building blocks and you've built them in ecamm in which case in which case that's gonna carry right over <laughs> shout out shout to out Anna these guys here <laughs> we did not design this this looks amazing um this is actually all completely built in ecamm so that will carry over but if this was a background um that's what that would be all right. Yeah. yeah. So that's profiles. Anything I'm missing in profiles, Jill, or anything else? I don't think there's anything else I can demo easily, but you can see here, you can export your profile. That's what you would do if you wanted to send it mm -hmm. to someone else. Um, you can rename them, you can duplicate them. So you can mm -hmm. either start from a blank one or, um, or duplicate them, but it really just allows you kind of a, a safe space to begin planning. So Step one, have a concept or a show or the plan of what you want to do, what kind of content you want to create. Step two, 
go into Ecamm, check all your settings, preferences, make sure everything is looking great. Step three, start a new profile. Again, double checking that all your preferences and everything are the way you want them for that show. (laughs) And then you will enter this space, the scene space, right? Go ahead, Jill. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. How dare you? How dare you? I was trying to interrupt you and you didn't let me, Katie. We don't get to spend enough time together. I just love you. You you shut your mouth. So what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say, when you're making your profiles or when you're making your show, um, I do one show for my Miss Jill channel where I teach um, Brazilian Portuguese speakers how to speak English. Mm-hmm. And I have a scene set up kind of like this for interviews. And what's great about this is that I can repurpose like a side-by-side video mm-hmm. to be a vertical video by putting one person on the top, one person on the bottom. Mm-hmm. So when you're when you're thinking about your design, if you're starting a brand new show, trying to think about how you can repurpose things. So I've also found that when I facilitate another live stream, we often have three people on the stage at the same time. And I put myself on the side because most of the time I'm kind of a moderator and I don't add a lot to the conversation. So if that client then wants to repurpose that into like a square video, Mm-hmm. They can do that really easily. Well because <laughs> they just, it's they just, just shop you right out. <laughs> just just cut, cut me right out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so be mindful too of your overlays and those different things. So like I try to always think about how am I going to repurpose what I'm doing and how can mm-hmm. I make it be as seamless as possible? People also are, are going to be aware that like if things don't need to be perfect, like if you look at your favorite TikToks accounts, I'm sure that it is not the most beautiful. It is always about the content, <laughs> mm-hmm. what's being shared yeah what's the lesson or the the humor or whatever so uh but still making your life easier by not having to like redo things or make things overly complicated and not not repurposable no yeah easily. absolutely yeah yeah and i mean on that front you know obviously ecam is going to give you the the whatever the output recorded file is on the other side of it so whatever, yeah. whatever you've selected is what ecam will automatically record to and if you've checked on that um isolated audio files, you'll also get all of the audio for it. And these days really, you know, I, it's hard to, to not do a podcast or repurpose that audio in some way or another. So it seems, seems like one you all should be turning on and using in some way or another. Yes. Um, we're certainly thinking through we're ways we can use that. still at the beginning yeah. mm-hmm. of the bell cur- right? We're still like mm-hmm. early adapters, but pretty soon we're not going to be. So yeah, but take advantage of that ISO um, audio, because even if you're not using it right now, save it. I mean, there are podcasts that I've interviews I've done over a year, two years ago that I'm like, Oh man, I should go back and share that. Or I really liked the way that he and I communicated that one point. I mean, there's mm-hmm. just so much value in that. And so just having it there and get yourself some external little hard drives and save that shit up. You know, oh, I just swear. I didn't mean to swear. Oh, it happened and it's live. Save that stuff. TPS report. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, that to you as well. <laughs> All uh, right. So let's build, let's build out a scene. So, mm-hmm. so here's the scenes window. Let's, Let's make this, oh yeah, we'll make this moderately bigger for older people, blind people, <laughs> all of us, all of us. What are we looking at here? All right, so we have this Jill and Katie show folder. So let's we'll close that up. Let's make a new folder. Let's call it Awesome Show. All right, so here's our Awesome Show folder. Woo, I'm opening things. What can you oh, help God. me with? Now Siri's talking to Siri is talking to me. All right. See, we're live. Anything's possible. <laughs> All right, let me close this up. Okay, so here we are in our new scene. You can still hear us, but you can't see us because it's a blank scene. All right, so let's call this scene um, countdown timer, right? Let's start with a countdown timer. So I have a couple different backgrounds. So you can slide in, drag and drop a background and layer things in that way. That is usually a good way to kind of start thinking about building a scene. It's just a background color or a background. I got this one um, from our designer, but you can find them in Canva and find, you know, I find them in a ton of different places. And then the easiest way to do it these days is to go up to the overlay menu. And there's a bunch of ways to access this, but this is just how I do it. But and then click the camera overlay, right? So then I can bring myself on. Here's me. <laughs> and you can go ahead. Man, too many menus. 
You can go ahead and change the size. Let's say I want to be a squircle shape. I love me a squircle and make me like there. And then if you hold down the option key, that'll duplicate it and slide someone over next to you. And then you can come up here and change that camera over to Jill, right? Easy side by side in like two seconds first scene not matching my countdown timer though but you know so then maybe we want to come back over here and say you know hey whoops I'm going in the wrong order so this is our side by side right and it seems silly to name these and, and label these but really it becomes helpful as you're building things out so then you know we yes. can duplicate this scene all right so now we'll call this one countdown timer and then you can drag it above. And this one here, let's say we remove us and we go back up here over to overlays. And we're gonna go, oh, we're gonna go over here to, hey, where did my countdown timer go? Fly in from top. Well, because you're oh, on text. Oh, I'm on text. Wow. You know, <laughs> told you that it was that kind of day. <laughs> this is why it's good to have a, a co-pilot in with you. All right. Here's a boring countdown timer. <laughs> right? And then we can add text in that says, ah, we <laughs> we're having a day. See you in... <laughs> <laughs> this is why I shouldn't be in charge today. This is my favorite. This is my favorite live stream. Right here. Right here for you. Oh. So this is why it takes me forever to build shows. Easy countdown timer, right? And then, and then we got to make sure we... You got to check yep, the settings, it. right? So... We're doing this as 10 minutes. You can change this to two minutes or three minutes or whatever your countdown timer is. I usually do the go to scene, next scene when finished. You can click there. And then we can throw some music over top of it. Why not happy birthday? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would go automatically into us right here. So this is how you would build out. We're going to shoot back over. This is how you would yep. build, start building out your content. Obviously, you would have in mind what your brand colors are, what you would want these things to look like. You know, these have borders around them because I'm already in a, in a setting. Ugh. All right. I'm going to make my so own sound effects. I've noticed that for a lot of people's countdown timers, I would mm -hmm. say a lot of people, especially in the Ecamm world, they'll do a countdown timer with a semi-transparent overlay so that mm -hmm. you can see kind of like we did at the beginning of this. We, you can see us, we're engaging, we're dancing with the music, we're chit-chatting, mm -hmm. we're inter interacting with the comments. I know for me, for a few of the shows that I do, mm -hmm. I actually, I, I pull in a video. So the video basically is like the one minute, it includes a little countdown timer, mm -hmm. it includes a, a, a preview of, of what we're gonna be talking about or whatever, but then I'll have that video when that video ends i'll set that to go to the next scene mm -hmm. automatically so i like that um in terms of producing because when i produce i'm also usually in the same room with people um so for me i like to be like okay we're already streaming i can check a few things and i don't want to necessarily be on camera yeah but that's totally up to you and your preference yep. um i also find that when i stream where i'm in a scene with a semi-transparent overlay and then mm -hmm. a countdown timer i feel like i hit live and then there's still a second that it like reorients yeah. and it like redoes the timer. Yeah. So um, I'm curious if you're, if you're watching this live, let us know if you are team video countdown or team like being on camera during the countdown. Cause I've, I, I, I feel like it's 50, 50 from what I see. I don't like to have a lot of like a long intro, a long bumper, but I do like having like a minute or two, on a pre-recorded video to be like, let people get in and double check all the tech before we're actually live on camera. But what do you, what do you prefer, Katie? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I don't do a ton of, the mass majority of videos that I'm queuing up and getting ready are this show or, yeah. you know, or they're like 
presentations and things where I'm using Ecamm as a virtual camera in, in which case I yeah. don't have a countdown timer. So this one, uh, it is just fun for us to dance and be silly with I our ridiculous, <laughs> with our ridiculous show. But, it's um, wonderful. but yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I would think that it, I, I, an intro video probably looks a little bit more professional for an event. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say yeah. that like a countdown timer probably makes a lot more sense for like a live, a live show that you're doing. I find countdown timers right. fun because it gives you, I like the kind of behind the scenes look you like too. I, you know, we dance and are stupid, but there's people who, who do like, um, they're setting up and you kind of get like a different camera angle or a different shot of their studio, yep. which is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, yeah. so hang on, we got a couple questions that are coming in. I want to make sure that I'm answering yep. them. Oh, it's Alex. I like TPS. I think that sounds awesome. <laughs> Where's the Rodecaster Pro? I know I have the Rodecaster Pro. I, I we did not finish setting up the swear button. We need to do that because obviously Jill's going to get out of hand. So <laughs> I mean, really got to finish getting that in. Um, this is a great question. So uh, Jill is coming in through our interview mode. So if you don't know what that is, this is this little yes, window um, up here. Um, so you can see, so here's me at the top and then Jill, I sent her a link. It's hiding it in live demo mode so that you don't all, all rush to call in and join the show, <laughs> but it gives me a link that I can then send to Jill. Jill opens up an internet browser, um, preferably Chrome or, uh, Firefox are the two kind of best ones to use. Um, and then she can just click through and, and join. And once, once she has called in and kind of appears here in this interview window, then I have the ability to add her as a camera um, to any kind of scene. And I can change the shape. I can, you know, move her around. I can, you know, I can, let's see. So was she, was she, was she, she was saying earlier that she did where she was, let's say, let's see here. Was she, she's Jill's the main person and I'm the little tiny Hiding it behind Jill person up, up here. It makes sense. Yeah, right? So we can do any of those kinds of things. And then there was the other question that came through, which is a great question, is um, Michael just killing it with the questions today. Um, yeah, so I would say that once we introduced camera overlays and screen share overlays and the kind of the concept of all of these elements being things that you would lay on top of mm -hmm. or layer on top of your creation process or this main window, it's significantly easier. If you do it the other way, um, here, let's do it the other way, because why not, right? So I do it the other way, and I bring myself in. <laughs> hey, terrible camera. Tater can. Uh, right? And I switch, my, adorable, I switch myself over. <laughs> and then I can add Jill in as a side screen. It just... There is, you know, there's not as much functionality that I can do with that. So there's less what, you can control. Yeah. What we used to have to do is like build these, you know, kind of somewhat elaborate graphics that had like transparencies so that you could layer those on top of this and we could like peek through yeah. to achieve that same um, kind of side by side ability that you have here. So, and the, obviously the camera overlays are great, but the other thing that's awesome is, let's see here, let's move Jill to be smaller up here is that you can um you can also do screen share overlays so it's so funny you go from the top i almost always use <laughs> like i never do these things from the top i do it from the little menu bar i know everyone does it really um, differently i don't know why i do it's so I, funny that's how i've always done it and i'm one of those people that like once i've done it like three or four times it's like it's locked <laughs> in Except for when I'm demoing live and then I, and then it's not, and I look stupid, but Hey, you know, it's locked in, but here's my, here's my, here's my screen. And so if I was, you know, if I was demoing something or showing something on my screen, it would be just be significantly easier for me to have control over what the size is. You can crop yeah. it in this case, which makes it a lot easier. I'm usually on a laptop, so it's harder for me to, to screen share, um, when I don't have two monitors. So I'm, you mm -hmm. know. That makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, I do find it easier than the switcher. Obviously, you can still use the switcher. You can build scenes any way that you want to build them. Katie, you got to make yourself big again. You're so teeny no, tiny. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I'm coming. There we go. There we go. Now it's Maybe good. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, India's got a great comment um, about scenes. And I, this, yeah, this last mm -hmm. comment. So great. Scenes are like rooms in your house. Um, and the overlays are like furniture you can decorate your rooms with. Yeah, that's awesome. So each scene, you think of it as a different room. And then what do you want to be in there and where do you want it? Mm -hmm. um, 
I love that explanation. That's really awesome. When yeah. I first downloaded Ecamm, I remember being like, because I was trying, I was teaching. So I wanted to have a lot of text overlays and stuff like that. But I couldn't decide if I wanted to set things up in um, overlay in the overlays panel or the scenes panel. Like, do I want to have, <laughs> if I want to go from sentence A, sentence B, sentence C, sentence mm -hmm. D, do I want to do those as overlays or do we want to go through my scenes? And I mean, it, you can, you can do so many things in so many different ways, but if you think of your scenes as like a room or um, as a storyboard, so like scene one, this is what I want to feature. This is the overall feel it's a video scene i'm going to show some b-roll or mm -hmm. it's an interview scene or it's showing my desktop um and then your overlays they can apply to just that one scene or if you have things that you want to pop up in all of the different scenes like hey thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe you can have that activated in your overlays now we're just kind of uh, i'm just going from one thing to the next but um no, I, I, whatever you can think of you really can do in in the ecamm <laughs> let's let's see how many different ways i was gonna say that it's that profiles are like a book scene folders okay. are like i like the pages and scenes are like the word maybe overlays are the words pages and words but we you could do a book but Paul, Paul's coming in here with painting, seeing as your canvas and you paint it. So we could think through all the different ways that we could <laughs> give examples for this. But yeah, I think, I think what makes it feel somewhat daunting sometimes is that it really, it, I think Paul's right in that it is, it does sometimes feel like a blank canvas. And so what, mm. what can be really challenging about it is that if you don't kind of, if you don't understand what your run of show or what the flow of the content mm -hmm. is and how you want that to go, that's where you're going to stumble. Because it, if you don't understand like, okay, I want to start with an intro video and then I'm going to move to just me and then I'm going to bring on a guest and then I'm going to have, you know, a, the, right. my cool quote from blah, 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 slide in on the right. Like you need to be able to storyboard it out and think through how you want yes. that content to flow because otherwise you're just going to sit here and, and kind of stumble your way through trying to figure out like what you want to put next yeah. and where, and there's too many options without all of that. I got to make you the same yeah. size, Jill. This is just really bugging me. Hang on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> duplicating so that you're the exact same size. Now there's two of me fair and you're like, fair. what? And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose you. I choose you. I love it. I absolutely I love you, it. Pikachu. I choose you. So one Pikachu. thing that I do in my, in my different profiles is that I have my main folder that has like the name of the show, like Katie's showing you up here. And then I also have in my regular shows, I have another folder of like, what did I call it? I always <laughs> I ha it's save, <laughs> save for later. So like mm. in my regular scenes, like um, if we have a guest at the Economic Development Corporation, for example, uh, we have this game that we play with like every other guest that's called where, where would you go or yeah. where do you go? Mm -hmm. So like, okay, in Marlboro, you, you're taking a client out to lunch. Where do you go? So I have that scene that I use regularly. So basically I want um, on the day of our stream are only this, the only scenes that are open in the folder are going to be scenes that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. And there's some scenes I might not end up using, you know, where it's just this guest or just this combination, everything like that. But then I have a whole nother folder underneath it called exploring EED. Mm -hmm. Um, save for later because yeah. there's just things I want to get. I don't want to accidentally click on something, but I also don't want to delete it. So I could do that in profiles, but for me, my workflow, it's easier for me to have, okay, here's exploring economic development. This is, we do this show once a month now, and here's the main folder. And then if we were to have repeated guests, it's like the same guest is going to come, you know, three times a year, I yeah. might make a profile that's just for them. So I don't have to redo the lower third. So I don't have to redo mm -hmm. titles and names and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think yeah. having having an extra folder where like you might use it, but probably not, but you don't want to get rid of it in this, in the show itself is yeah. helpful. Yeah. 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 I, and then I have, a, it's oh, funny. I do those as scenes. So they're like, it's like within my Jill and Katie show, I have like my main ones where it's like waiting screen and you know, this is, this is just the two yeah. of us. Right. And then I have like a copy of it where we could do a screen share, or I think this one's kind of trying to connect to my phone, which is off. And then I've, you know, just Jill, just Katie, we have our promos. 
Um, mm -hmm. but I have like backup ones for later that, that are on the other side of my closing. So I have, you know, yeah, my okay. solo, it looks like there's a bit, the video is not found. Oh, my fail video is not found. Um, <laughs> and there's like, you know, there's just me that that's like a backup yeah. file. You know, I have, I, I'm starting to kind of store them on the other side of my closing. Um, but that's a good idea yeah. to have it as let me shoot back up here. Just in case you're not using in a, a folder. stream deck and, and you're, you're using a mouse and you might accidentally click on something that's you know when yeah. the stakes are high i <laughs> yeah. try to make sure i remove and like a show like this that's it's fine but if, if you're wanting to have it be as polished as possible you want to take away any variables that could set you off yeah. or that could you know could could mess things up for you um and i wanted to mention another thing i do this quirky thing <laughs> um if you will you go over to the um your scene that says closing mm -hmm. it's gonna play music you ready no, no, don't play it. Don't play it. Okay. Just like, click on like if you were going to change the title of it. So mm -hmm. what I like to do is at, right before closing, I put like three stars. And the reason why I do that is it if it's for a scene where it closed, I just picked closing because so I could read it. Yeah. My, my eyesight. But, um, <laughs> if I know that I'm going to go to a scene, like I have some safety scenes where I'm like, okay, if the guest suddenly talks about something on their website, but I don't have it queued up. I know that that scene I need to edit before I go to it. So mm. for me, I mean, I try to anticipate every scene or any possible thing I might want to show. I always have the guest logo, their social media, mm -hmm. um, pictures that they said that they wanted to talk about, videos that they said that might want to be featured. In. Yep. But there also are those moments where like, oh, you know what? That'll take me two seconds. I can go find what they're talking about. Yeah, yep. they did this big project. Yeah. So I have a few scenes like that with stars in front. Usually That's they say idea. star, star, star website star 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 <laughs> picture and in those scenes i have i know i'm gonna have the host the guest me and then i have this spot in the scene that's reserved for something i can add on the fly mm -hmm. so i have a couple scenes like that and i always put stars in front of them so that i know wait before i click on that i need to do something um you can do a similar thing with your stream deck if you're using stream deck for shortcuts mm -hmm. i just like when i talk about this type of stuff i just pretend that nobody has anything extra other than ecamm so if you're just switching with your mouse or with your keyboard shortcuts or whatever having a couple scenes that are kind of like placeholders mm -hmm. um, if you're able to, or if you're, if that makes sense for your show, I, lo I love having that. Yeah. The one thing that I have not yet done, but it, but certainly if you have more, again, more important shows than this one, <laughs> we're so Is mean to our show, things? more important shows Is than this one, thing? things where, where there are people, where there are things, money and things riding on it, you uh, you're having hired a, for something. Exactly. When you're being hired for something, you having the idea of having like a be right back screen or like a, mm -hmm. like some kind of thing where, where you're able to throw, <laughs> throw it up if some something happens or if you're having some kind of issue it goes a really yeah. long way and I mean you could be as kind of fun and and playful with it as you want to be but I that's one that I don't have in my rotation but it would be super easy to yeah. pull together in Canva and just throw over have some fun music behind it just be like a oh, whoops yep. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back but that will give yep. you a little bit of time to go into preview and be able to make any changes um that you want. I know we have a whole slew of questions coming over. So loving all the questions. They're so great. All right. So is there a possibility of a match properties button? Set up a camera overlay, the match its properties on any other. Oh, that's a great idea. No, not yet. Um, but Let me read that again. Yeah. To be able to match its properties. It, you can do that with yeah. option. That's what I've been like. It, it duplicates what you've set up, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But I, I think I think so like, you're meaning basically like the the LUTs or the way that you're um, editing yeah. the camera, right? Yeah, yeah. I, that's a good. I I'm gonna consider that a feature request, and the guys are in front of the camera again next week, so we'll I'll pass that one along. But that's a good thought as trying to think through some of those things. I know we've been thinking through too, like how to make brand kits and brand colors a little bit easier. Like, can you drop your brand color? You can't, you can right now go and choose your brand colors if you have like the hex code um, so that you can match everything. But it'd be nice to be able to kind of drop those in and have Ecamm just be like, hey, we know you like this pink. <laughs> like, let's, let's use that as your default would be great. Let me play with something. So now I've got yeah, yeah, the same camera. One's, one's USB and one's um, coming through my A10 Mini Pro, which is overkill, but that's okay. So yeah, if I have, if I set, let's say I want to do uh, black and white because I'm, I'm dramatic like that, you know, 
Um, <laughs> I mean, I could do apply to all scenes, but that's not going to apply to all cameras. Are you sure you want to apply this to all scenes? Why not? Yeah. So it's not applying to the other camera. So I'd have to go in and switch back to the other camera. Yeah, I could see that that would be tedious. But the good thing is that even if I go to um, a new scene, <laughs> Jillian, um, it's still, it's whatever you apply to that. So let's say that you've got multiple cameras uh, or multiple cameras and multiple scenes and and, and what whatnot. You can still, it'll still keep that setting for the camera. Like if, if I, if, oh my God, what am I trying to say? If I want all of my cameras to be black and white and all of my guests to be black and white because we're dramatic, then once you set them, even if you make a new scene with different um, combinations, it'll still maintain that to those scenes if you want it to. So you don't have to redo it over and over and over and over again. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. I think I was saying it in the in a roundabout <laughs> way. But yeah, no, I think that that would be a good feature request. Good I'm feature curious. Um, who, whoever Alex, asked, I can't, yeah. I can't remember. Alex. Alex, yeah. I'm curious on what your, on how you would use that or, or why, what the need is there. So yeah. tell us more if you can. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, India and I are on the same page as always. You know, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, various profiles would help. I was, when, when, when we first rolled out profiles, I was like, I'm not going to use profiles because I only do like one thing. And, you know, I was just kind of like, doing it as I set stuff up. But then I started coming up with these really what I thought were clever were what I thought were very clever, fun presentations using text overlays, oh, okay. super clever. And so I wanted to be able to, to save those, but it got, it got to a point where I had like what felt like 150 different scenes and they were all named different things. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I can't find what I'm looking for. And they you know, they were named like, like past events. It was like, this is the blah, blah, blah conference. And this is the <laughs> from like, you know, last year and whatever. So it, it did make it easier that I now have profiles that, um, where I'm just testing and playing or ones that are regular shows. So yeah, it, it does. It feels like it might not, it might be overkill for some users, but I think you, I think most yeah. people could find a use for it. So, um, yeah, Michael, way to go. That's awesome. Building blocks. They are wizards. You see, if they were here awesome. designing They're scenes, so they would be doing much better, much better than what I'm doing here. <laughs> we have Eileen in the house. We have Spazia in the house. I love it. Be right back. Scenes can be a lifesaver. Yeah, I, it's what, I think I yeah. haven't really considered it much, which is funny because I, I, rem I distinctly remember watching a, an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's how old I am. And, and, uh, and there, was yeah. like a, there was like a live episode. And, and maybe this is like, I, I'm at the point now where it's like lore. Like I, I hope that this is an accurate memory and not like something that's been passed down to me that I now believe is accurate. <laughs> but it was, a li it was like a, a live telethon thing that he was doing. And he walked in and he tripped on the step. And it went to like mm. immediately one of those like, beep, like we're having technical difficulty screens. And we were all like, oh, is Mr. Rogers okay? Like having a screen like that, you know, television used to do it. So why not us? Like, it feels like it could be a good, <laughs> good thing to have yes. in, case, in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong. And uh, having those, having, a, um, I think I mentioned this on our, on our, one of our episodes, having uh, an editable uh, text overlay mm -hmm. that you can put in all scenes as well. And that's mm -hmm. one that I definitely have in my, in my other show. And I have stars in front of it because I know <laughs> I want to make sure I edit it first because sometimes, sometimes I just want to say like, if we're talking about something for a long time and people jump into live streams at different times. So giving them a little bit of context into like having yeah. something that's up there, like a scrolling ticker, we're talking, talking about, you know, upcoming events here in Marlboro or whatever. Yeah. There's so much that you can um, do with that as well. So having some overlays that you can queue up and you can edit uh, right here in Ecamm with text is, is a great way to communicate to a viewer um, just to catch them up on where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this question. Where can we keep a toolbox of commonly used assets that we might use across different shows? Is it easy to copy and paste overlays between scenes or profiles? Um, that's a great question. It, so I keep, so what I do is I have um, hiding, <laughs> hiding embarrassingly behind all of these things up here. I don't know how easy <laughs> this is to see. I just have a, a folder on my desktop <laughs> appropriately named 
all <laughs> and, with, <laughs> and, with, and within it I have like I have different folders that have the different assets in them and so if you don't move the assets and you've you've drag and drop them or upload them into ecamm and into your different profiles you won't run into any issues ecamm remembers where everything is the challenge is if you like if you're like me and you're like oh, i'm cleaning my desktop and you delete things and um mm-hmm. and forget that you would assign them to ecamm you might get a prompt like what comes up here when i click on this solo video yep. it says file not found that's because when we did our fail episode, I was like, I don't need these videos anymore. So I moved them off my desktop onto our digital storage. Um, And so it's not, you can't, can't find it anymore. So it, there's not, there's not really, but if you save everything in a folder, so let's say that, um, that you're suddenly ill and you want me to run the show and Mm -hmm. we're on different computers and different cities and everything. So if you have all of your digital assets for this show in Mm -hmm. a folder, Mm -hmm. so you can export the profile, send it to me and then drop that whole folder in Google drive or Dropbox or whatever other file exchange you want to do. And then when I hit those, I would obviously go through each scene before we're live streaming. I'd hit that scene and make sure some of those assets might be burned into ecamm they're right here in ecamm so i don't need to connect anything but if not when i hit that solo button that scene then mm-hmm. i can locate the Reattach. file and yeah. tell ecamm where that file is and yeah. or replace that file with something else if i want to do a different video yeah so exactly. it is it is pretty easy it's like you know you export the profile mm-hmm. and you could it you know or even just folders if you don't want to do a whole profile yeah export that share that out and then if there's extra things then have them all in one place and send them over or send them to yourself. Cause I use a lot of different devices. I'm on my Mac mini. I'm not bringing this with me wherever I go. Yeah. You know? But. Yeah. That's actually a really good point that we didn't mention. So you can, as we said, you can export a profile. You can do the mm-hmm. same thing with a scene folder mm-hmm. or any scene. So you can send a scene, yep. a group of scenes, a folder full of scenes, a profile, <laughs> anything goes over the, the difference is, is that the, scene and scene folders are just going to hold what exists within the scene or within the scene folder. Whereas the profile also includes many of the settings. I don't think it's all of the settings, but it's almost all of the settings. So, um, something to watch there for sure. Yeah. And a great thing you can do, like, let's say that someone's watching you stream about whatever it is that your show is about. And they say, wow, I really love the way that you, you know, that you look and that, you know, send them your ecamm affiliate link and then some of your scenes and be like okay here you go download for free i mean that's that's going to help you out but it's also going to help your person out so they're not starting from scratch so when Mm -hmm. they go to play with ecamm and they kind of don't know what all of this is (laughs) and what all of these things are you're giving them a free starting point and if you don't feel comfortable sharing everything just share a couple of scenes or share a folder and you know complimentary i made all this in ecamm so you don't even have to download anything else and you Mm -hmm. you know that that's a that's an easy way to help people out and give back to the community especially if you're creating cool things and cool setups right here in ecamm yeah yeah absolutely um all right alex is back and (laughs) he's saying i asked that a while while you had two different size shaped camera overlays a match pro oh yeah that would be yeah so i think i did understand you correctly so it's like carrying over all the same settings you you can do that with the option key, but you're right. It would be easier. Like you can duplicate it, but then I had to X out of the other one. So that, that is fair. Like if you just had a button that's just said like, make these the same, that would be cool. I like it. I'm going to pass it along. I see what you mean. Yeah. (laughs) More buttons. Um, this is a good one. I, I actually don't know if I know, this is one of these things that I don't do a lot with any ideas how to do a transition stinger keyed to the before and after a scene. Um, where were transitions? Do you use transitions much, Jill? I'm going to try to remember off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Source, camera. So wait, can we read this again? Oh, sorry. Oh, this Oops, sorry. Any ideas how to do a transition stinger keyed to the before and after a scene? Ecamm does oh, yeah. have built-in like transitions, the- but I can never remember where they are. Scene. You mean like an animated overlay that like before I go to this next scene of just me, mm-hmm. I hit a button a transition comes and then I'm in the next scene. There's yeah. lots, of, if that's what you mean, there's lots of tutorials on that. 
Um, actually, if you go there, it to is transition. Not- They're under options. So there, yeah. So you can add. So I just have the default set in here. We do have some existing transitions. These may not be the ones that mm-hmm. you, these may not be the transitions you're looking for. <laughs> but, but if they uh, if they are. And again, Diana's got a, a great video on this as part of the Ecamm Simplified series. But mm-hmm. um, these we have some like very kind of basic and funky, <laughs> funky ones here under the options menu down to transition. Um, but yeah, there are other, I'm sure that there are other tools also yeah. that they'll help you pull that in. If you're looking to have stingers go before and after, mm-hmm. the best way that I've done that is uh, by utilizing either hot keys or your stream deck. But if you go to, if you go to the Ecamm Facebook and I'm not plugging myself, but I'm telling you, it will save you time. Go to the Ecamm Facebook <laughs> and type in Jillian. Yeah. I've been, I, I made a, a very short tutorial on how to do that. Um, you can also find lots on YouTube, but if you're talking about stingers to kind of re- go from this scene to a solo scene and have like a cool swipey thingy mm-hmm. activated, um, there are, there are, it is not as plug and play, but it is very doable. And once you set those up and if you're redoing the same show over and over again with different guests or just yourself or whatever, it becomes like something you don't even think about. Um, but it can really be snazzy. The yeah. copy machine transition is hilarious. Yeah. Yes, is. <laughs> yeah. If you want to play with ours so you can see what's possible, <laughs> there's just tons of options there. Um, this gonna, is a great I'm question. We. <laughs> this is a great. Hold on. I'm going to. Oh, you, you go ahead. I'm just going to make my, I'm going to make a transition myself. to. See. All right, Axel, there, um, there are some marketplaces for backgrounds, <laughs> for backgrounds and other tools. Um, we don't have an official one yet. We've been kind of talking back and forth as to whether or not we want to do that or how, how we want to help out with that. But if you go in, if you go to our support, I'm going to type this in, um, support.ecam.com. Uh, ecam.com and you search uh, for graphics search for the keyword graphics you will see um, a page there that has a whole bunch of our recommended uh, graphics and animation packages that have been created by ecam um, ecam fam people so there's a bunch there's a bunch of awesome ones in there Um, and there I mean there are a ton at Luria off the top of my head at uh, live streaming pros has a bunch of them on Infulgence you know design these ones (laughs) Uh oh, we lost Jill. Design these ones um, here that we're using, and uh, Bradley Vinson does a whole bunch of trainings as well on how you can design your own as well as sell some. So there's there's a bunch of options there, but it's a good thought to open up our own area. Um, Carlos is using two phones like a camera, um, but just work one. How are you connecting them in? So there's a bunch of different ways you can connect a a phone to use as a camera in Ecamm. So I'm not sure I entirely understand your question, but feel free to ask again. You can absolutely use phones to connect them as cameras. There's Jill back again. There's Jill back again. (laughs) I got the most random message. I took a screenshot of it. It's just like... (laughs) <laughs> this is a good reminder that if anything bad happens, you can always open a ticket by going to our website and clicking on the orange icon in the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> this PSA uh, brought to you by Ecam Katie. Ecam Katie. Paul's yeah, Paul's got one called Ecam Assets. Yeah, same as me. I, if you go into my all folder, I have my Ecam Assets folder. Um copy machine is absolutely hilarious. There's the exact link. There we go. Graphics packages and overlays. <laughs> Oh my goodness. How is it 453? Every time, you know, know every time, every time it happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the, uh, that's, that's it. The, that's the ticket. The light, <laughs> it's the light rays. Yeah. Some of them are really great. Diana, when Diana did her, her video for Ecamm simplified, she went through a bunch of them and she tested out the like, I think it was like the super slow dissolve or whatever that one is. And she was like, wow, Ooh. this one's slow, <laughs> really slow. Slower cross dissolve. Slower cross dissolve, yeah. Oh, you know, it's kind of cool with me switching from a colored to a black and white scene. Oh, it is kind of right? cool. I'm going to slowly turn black and white. All right. Guys, I'm just getting emotional Ooh, right here. This is for your very Aww. emotional. <laughs> emotional. Very <words>. emotional. <laughs> Ripple back to me. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, two phones at the same time. Yes. So yeah, you can absolutely connect two phones at the same time. The your only challenge you're going to have is whether you're doing, um, whether you're using a tool that allows you to connect them wired or wirelessly wired, you're going to get a better connection, but you're going to need to have ports in your computer to be able to connect them in or some kind of dock that will allow you to connect them in. Um, but yeah, you can, you can connect a whole fleet of phones, <laughs> a fleet of phones. Yeah. And Paul's sharing camo is a great tool. We've done videos with them before and you can find um, them in the perks section on the Ecamm page ecamcom slash blog slash perks. I'm trying to make that easier, but haven't got quite there. Slash Katie slash Ecamm Katie slash Ecamm fam slash Bill is here. And the password is Ecamm fam perks. Really secret password right there. Secret pa- The secret word is. All right. Well, hang on. I got to swing over to my, my promos because we're almost at the end. So shoot over any oh. final questions while we swing over to what's coming up next in the world of Ecamm. We have... The Cinco de Mayo edition of Ask Ecamm. Grab your margaritas and come and join us on May 5th. We will be hanging out at 3.30 p.m., so different time than usual, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. You can find um, the link is already there, and you can submit questions early, or you can just join us live and hang out, but we'll be having fun. Um, Ecamm Simplified, which I've been talking a ton about, <laughs> is ecamm.tv slash simple. You can find all those videos. They're also here on our YouTube channel. Looks like that's it. Looks like that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else coming up. Oh, you know what? No, hang on. Wait, I had one more promo. This one? Yeah, there we go. There we oh. go. Stephanie <laughs> is coming back with a whole new season of Showrunner. If you missed the first season, replay uh, the replay edition is up now on YouTube and on the Video Hub. Um, in the first season, she talked all about how you can be a remote live producer. So a lot of the stuff that Jill covers here on this show, how to be a producer, is she just goes in detail, including a pricing calculator, which is like one of our top videos. Season super super valuable, super valuable. <laughs> Every yeah. question yeah. where everyone's like, "What do I charge for this?" Um, but season two is going to be even better because we're talking about live selling. So your zillion and one questions about like, how do I get on Amazon live? What if I want to sell products? Can I do that on Facebook? What are the different tools? How much do I charge? Can I be a live selling producer? All those, all those things <laughs> are coming up in uh, the second season of Showrunner, which also starts on Sanco de Mayo. So it's like, it's just, it's going to be our favorite day. Um, it's just May 5th, you know, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> we have Stephanie and then immediately followed by Ken and Glenn monthly Q and A. So that's a good day. And then we should everyone. do like a late live stream that day just for fun. Like after we've made it through all of that, maybe get Doc on there and just have some like, just drink all the various, just, <laughs> just recap. <laughs> The post show Whatever. where we, yeah, where we just have like live commentary. <laughs> so we, it'll just be like the two people tuning in, tuning in for that. Oh, Gretchen, this yeah. is a question I don't, I don't immediately have the answer for, but yes, on ENN on Mondays at mm. 7 p.m. Eastern on Unfulgens are doing a, a, can you replicate the Ken and Glenn photo? Um, they, yeah, I will, I will find that drive and I'll either email that over to you, Gretchen, or I'll drop it here in the description in, unless Paul finds it for me, which I'm sure he's madly doing at the, at the moment. But uh, great question. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that one. All right, Rachel, what, what else are we missing in the world? of? I mean, have a, have a plan. Take your time. Double check all of your yeah. preferences. Label everything. Set yourself yeah. little um, visual cues. I think that's a really good one that um, I'm going to start using that Jill had. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and try, test out and try profiles because many of you are doing yeah. multiple things and using Ecamm in a bunch of different ways. So, you know, play around with being able to switch easily back and forth between them. And if you need more practice, don't be afraid to ask in the group. I literally have learned so many things about remote producing just by saying, okay, I'm just going to hop on and do a live stream <laughs> in the Ecamm community. Yeah. Anybody want to join? And I've learned some what would be very embarrassing lessons. Uh, <laughs> Come be embarrassing in, in our group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's, there's no shame in that, you know, everybody. And, and also like, I mean, take advantage of the, um, 
Stephanie's shows because there are a lot of us that are starting to do more and more things. We're really excited about it. We're really proud about it. And there's a lot of things that we can do, but learning how to then transfer those skills into money-making opportunities or career opportunities yeah. can be intimidating. Some I think people go one of two ways. Either they're like, oh my God, I'm amazing and actually everyone needs to pay me lots of money mm -hmm. or I ain't doing it. That's a scary place to land, but then also like doing everything pro bono for free because you know, no, it's just me. And like, I'm just trying to, I'm just like new and yeah, all you this. You don't want to be there no, either. There's, yeah. You don't want to be there either. And mm -hmm. there's, I always say there's lots of opportunities to take these skills that we're all learning and that we're all fluent in, or we're, we're getting there and we're growing. There's lots of opportunities to apply that and to support yourself. Um, but Stephanie show the show showrunner, right? Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that I would really push people to do. And if you're brand new to Ecamm, um, go, go look up Adrian Salisbury. I think he just did a relaunch, but even if you, if you didn't get into his class right now, go look at all of his other content. And then Alec is also really great too. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's just so many things that you can learn for free or for a very minimal investment that will turn around and be really, really great for you. Give you confidence and really improve your skills. And now I'm rambling. It's 501. You have to pick up your kid from coding <laughs> class. Oh, I gotta go. No, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> oh no well no we are good and that was all super valuable helpful information so yeah i think it's great i hope to see everyone in the community we'll be back again next week same bad time same bad channel and yeah who knows who knows what our topic will be for next week send us some ideas uh we've been taking feedback yeah yeah it's not yet monday so we haven't figured it out yet <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'll get there <laughs> thanks for hanging out jill thanks for hanging out everyone Thank you. we will see you again next time <laughs>